This is the truth, and I know it's hard to hear, but there are so many people who are trying to get in tech and will fail to do so this year in 2022. And in this video, I wanna talk about how you can make sure that that person isn't you that you could make in tech industry. Stay tuned to this video and I'm gonna show y'all how. The tech industry is amazing. We get insane salaries, we get the best health benefits, we get best life insurance, we get 401k matching, we get really good work-life balance. Depending on the team that you work with, and more than anything, a lot of us, or at least a good amount of us, get to work from home like I do, right? The thing is though, right, the tech industry is amazing, but it's not easy. It's not easy, but that's also why we get paid so well. <laughs> I have a relative, my sister-in-law, she went to pharmacy school and I believe she racked in about $200,000, $300,000 in student debt to become a pharmacist, while a pharmacist here in Las Vegas makes up $287,000 a year. I think it's good to note that like a lot of engineers I know today make around that, if not much more, and they didn't even go to college. So they have no college debt, if not very minimal amount. They didn't need to go to medical school or go to school for six, eight years and spend an enormous amount of money to make about just under 200 k a year. And not even just that, I know for a fact that within the next five to 10 years, I will easily make around $400,000, $500,000 a year in tech. It's amazing, and so that's why so many people try to get in tech in the first place. Now, the thing is this, with all this competition, how can you get in? Why do so many people fail? And today I wanna to talk about why so many people fail when trying to get into tech today. The first reason is this, you will not make an attack because of the intense competition. It's just like the NBA, it's just like, I mean, we don't get paid as much as people as the NBA, well, some of us get paid more, but it's, it's just like the NFL, it's just like anything that's hot right now, anything that's hot is hard to get. PS5, Xbox, Series X, it's very hard to get your hands on that, or it's just very expensive to get your hands on that, right? Because there's only a little amount of that. Now, there are a lot of tech jobs out there, but there are more people who are trying to get those tech jobs than there are tech jobs available and to be more specific especially with everyone who's watching right now there are only x amount of junior positions and only x amount of developers that can fill those positions now the question then is right if you were to compare yourself to another junior developer why should someone choose you the competition to get into tech today right now is very very difficult that is why so many people give up because they're not willing to fight for that which blows my mind away i know it's not easy right i like I, I know it's not easy it's really not easy but if it's going to be life-changing money if going to tech will change your life your work-life balance you can travel the world while working you can take care of your whole family have the best health insurance you can work from home get insanely good salary but people are willing to just not fight for that and give up because a fierce competition is mind-boggling to me. But that's why people give up. Now, I have to be honest. I was lucky to get my first tech job in three months of just learning code. If I didn't get it in three months, if it took me a year, if not longer, I probably would have given up because there was no one guiding me and convincing me in why how it's possible and how it's worth it, even if it takes years to get my first job. My sister-in-law went to medical school, got a bachelor. She was in school for like, what, eight to 10 years before she could even start making 180K a year. Why is it that we should give up after just Learning code for one and two, when we'll make even more money than pharmacists, when we'll make even more money than some doctors out there. Maybe not more than a neurosurgeon. No, actually, no, I quite I know a few people who do make more than a neurosurgeon, but either way, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so let's go to the next topic, number two. You will not make it into tech because you're simply not good enough. And it's true, there are people who are good enough to make it in tech, and there are people who are not good enough to make it in tech. But the question then is, what is the definition of someone who is good enough to get into tech? The definition of someone who's good enough to get into tech is someone who took the time to learn code, to learn code the right way, and to learn the right technology as well. And I'm gonna to touch base on that in a little bit after this. A lot of people will give up because they're not good enough. And there's a lot more people who will give up because they think they're not good enough. There's something you need to understand. I've been in tech for six years. Actually in July, it's June right now, but in July, it would have been six years, exactly six years since I've been in tech. To this very day, June 1st, 2022, I still feel like I'm not good enough being in tech. That is a doubt I've been fighting my entire career in tech. Now, it is true I have anxiety. I have really bad anxiety. <laughs> I take medicine for that, but I still fight that to this very day. But just because I think I'm not good enough does not mean I'm not good enough. I've interviewed with fairly large companies who have been interested in me and I've rejected because I love my current job. I've even interviewed with other companies who are willing to pay me $100,000 more than what I'm earning right now, but I still rejected that position because I really love my job and I wanna to learn to become a better developer advocate. But despite all of that, I still feel like I'm not good enough. Just because you think you're not good enough does not mean that you are not good enough to be in tech, but so many people give up because of that reason. Don't let that be you, okay? All right, so number Three, number three, number three. Number three, you will not make into tech because the industry is too difficult to break into. It is true. It is very, very difficult to make into tech right now. 
Why? Hot demand. Who doesn't want to get paid 200, 100 to $200,000 a year in a matter of just a couple of years once you get into tech? Who doesn't want to have that easy life where if you're not happy at your job, you could find one in a matter of months, if not weeks, if not days, depending on how talented you are and how much effort you put in becoming a really good developer. But to think that you'll not make into tech because the industry is too difficult to break into, I'm gonna tell you this. A lot of jobs out there that pay very well are difficult to get into, becoming a doctor, becoming a nurse, right? A lawyer, We're trying to be a manager of a, a McDonald's, I don't know, or in and out they get paid decent and not too bad, right? But even that's hard to get into. Anything that's difficult to get into is difficult because the benefits you get from making it to that point supersede the life you have right now. Supersede the right word? I don't know, I'm not that good at vocabulary. It's supposed to be difficult, but to give up just because it's difficult makes no sense to me. Y'all have to understand, I was living in my car. Horrible health insurance. My medicine was way too expensive for me to afford. Now I can afford it easily because I got good health insurance, not just because I have good, I make a good income. It is supposed to be difficult because being in a tech industry is life-changing. To be able to dramatically change a life, if anyone has the opportunity to do that, and if they knew how, if they knew how to do that, despite knowing how difficult it's supposed to be, but knowing that it will actually work and the outcome will be worth whatever challenge you face, who wouldn't do that? I hope that made sense. It's supposed to be difficult to break into tech. Yo, I can help with my family with the rent. My fiance, I can help her out. My friend doing a struggle and I can help them out. My dogs, my dog, Tofu girl right there, Tofu girl. She's knocked out right there. I took her to the vet, her bill, 3,000 bucks. Now that's a lot of money and that hurt, but I was able to pay it and I was able to afford it. Like it was nothing. It was nothing because it's my freaking dog, right? I love her so much. But prior to tech, I don't even make $3,000 a month. I was making like $2,000 a month. So that she would have died if I didn't have the ability to save her with the money that I have. But it was worth it. And the reason I'm able to do that is because I was able to fight despite how difficult it could be to get in tech. I didn't let that stop me. Now, I guess I got a job in three months, but I did not let that stop me, fortunately. <laughs> Number four, another reason people don't make it in tech is this, you're not willing to invest in yourself. You, you are not willing to invest in yourself. That is very important. Everyone I know that has made it this, this far into tech, wherever they are in their career, they were able to do it because they invest in themselves. A lot of them, a lot of them didn't go to college. A lot of my friends didn't go to college. Friends that I now know because of tech, right? But a lot of them who didn't go to college made in a tech. Why? Because they were willing to put that time and invest in themselves. My gaming computer used to be out here, right? In this area. I'll post a picture of it. Uh, it's on Instagram, what my, my, my desk area looks like. Now my gaming computer is in the office far away in my house, the furthest from, from my living room. I don't even go in there. I did it on purpose. I want my gaming room to be as far away as possible from me so I play less games so I can invest more in myself and making more YouTube videos by learning more code, you name it. Because I'm willing to invest in myself, I want to continue investing in myself because I want to be able to make more money so I can take care of my family because I want to have five kids and they're really expensive, right? But I have to invest in myself if I want to move further in my career. And for people out there who don't even have a career in tech, if you're not willing to invest yourself to sacrifice anything to get there, sacrifice your gaming to maybe 50, 60% of the, whatever you're doing now to do that. You have to be willing to invest in yourself to make it. And yeah, people just aren't willing to invest in themselves to break into tech. Or maybe a lot of people don't believe in yourselves and that's when you really need to understand what you're able to do. A lot of the people I know that gave up, who are personal friends of mine, who gave up to get into tech, who gave up going into tech, they gave up because they didn't believe they can do it. None of them had my special, my, my learning disability. None of them that I know of at least had dyslexia, but I was able to do it. I believed in myself. Despite the barrier Barriers that was blocking me from even moving to again to where I am today. I don't let that stop me, and you can't let that stop you too. All right, number five. You will not make it in tech because they don't know where to start. You don't know where to start. I've met people who have tried to learn every single language out there all at the same time. I know someone who tried to learn C Sharp, C++, Python, JavaScript, React, all at the same time when you should know JavaScript before React. But the reason they're learning all these different languages, technologies all at once is because they read what's popular out there. They read what these job, what these particular jobs pay, and when they see what these particular jobs pay, they look at what technology they're using to earn that income, and they try to learn all that all at once. That is a problem. You need to be able to start small from one spot, one direction and move from here to there. A lot of people try to learn too many things at once. That's a no-no. If you want to learn how you could become a web developer in six months, I have a video, I'll put the link in the description below, on how you could become a web developer in six months. And if this part two version of the video isn't out yet, it'll be out soon. I'll be doing a 2022 version of how you could become a web developer in six months, what online courses I still use, and what direction you should go to depending on what you want to do in your career. All right, so last but not least, last but not least, so many people will not make an attack because of this last reason, which I think affects everyone who even has a career in tech right now, is because you're scared. They're scared. Everyone's scared. Will it be worth it? I'm learning tech. I'm, I'm, I'm learning front end development for one or two years. I've been rejected by 90 different companies. Guess what? There's a, a million more out there. I'm just not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good at math. You don't even need, you need to 
not be good at math unless you're doing machine learning and etc. I may be data engineering. A lot of people would think I don't have a degree. I'm not good at English, right? It helps me good at English, but you don't have to be the best at it, right? Fear is the one thing that holds so many people back. Thinking that they will fail. They're scared of failing. They're scared it won't work out. They're scared it won't be worth it. But nothing good comes easy. Everyone, please understand. Six years ago when I was living in my car, what I was scared of was what if my parents can't take care of themselves? What if they're struggling financially? And because I was lazy, because I wanted to be a professional Counter-Strike player, and by the way, I'm really good. I'm the best opera I know. If y'all are operas, or if y'all opera in Valorant, y'all think you're better than me, hit me up. We're gonna go one-on-one. -on -one. Anyway, because I want to be a professional Valorant player or whatever, uh, you know, you, you name it. And then my family struggles financially because of that, I'm not gonna let that happen. That scared me. So that's why I decided to go in tech and really work hard. I was more scared of that. And I, I, I think it's important to change all the fears. Like, what if I don't do anything with my life? What if I don't try to make that next step? What if I don't take that leap of faith in myself? I'll still be stuck where I am right now. What if I didn't try to sacrifice some time gaming and watching Netflix or Hulu, you name it, and just dedicate two hours, if not three hours a day, if not even one, every single day for one or two years? What if I don't do that? And I remain where I am now for the rest of my life because I was too scared to make that next step. I think we need to change a mindset when it comes to that. There's plenty of reasons, but I think this is one of the main reasons why so many people don't make an attack because of these reasons. If this is you, let me know below. If there's any other reasons that are stopping you, you think people don't make an attack, please let us know in the comment sections below. But I'm telling you, if I did it, you can't. I know a lot of people say if I did it, you can. I was a D average student, dyslexic, learning disability. I couldn't even speak well and now I speak for a living at conferences, YouTube, for my job. I speak on behalf of my company. If I'm able to do that with pure effort and determination, you can do it too. Anyway, thank you all for watching. This is Krishan. This is the life of a developer. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out.